First half for Jamal Murray. And the Nuggets have their biggest lead tonight. The coaches believed in us. Even in the third, we was down 20. They like, just keep making runs, keep making runs. And it showed us who we are. You know I'm going to stay with it. Edwards at the other end. The steal and the two. Steal by Edwards. Here he comes, and there he goes. Edwards, it's a three. Good. What a comeback by Minnesota. Denver led by 20, and Minnesota's come back to take the lead here in the fourth. Corner, Edwards shoots. And stunned silence in ball arena. Timberwolves have knocked out the defending champion Denver Nuggets. They are advancing to the Western Conference Finals for the first time in 20 years. For the first time in two decades, the Timberwolves are back in the conference finals. Minnesota trailed by as many as 20 points in the third before storming back to dethrone the defending champion Nuggets in game seven, despite Anthony Edwards struggling through a six for 24 shooting performance. Four time all star Carl Anthony Towns scored 23 points, 12 rebounds, gave about as an effective a one on one defensive effort against Denver's three time MVP. Nikola Jokic. So the Timberwolves comeback win after trailing by 15 at halftime with the largest in a game seven in NBA history. It's never happened. And their comeback from down 20 in the third was the largest in a game seven win in the last 25 postseasons. Historic. Let's hear from both squads. Up first, Ant and Cat. And usually in NBA history, it says you have to lose and lose big before you win. What is it about this team that says we lost that, last year? Yeah, but that, that that's different. You have to lose at a bigger stage. Usually teams. Usually it's the playoffs. Win. We lost last year. <laughs> we lost the last two years. <laughs> Damn. How much more we got to lose? Yeah, how much you want us to lose? We've been losing for 20 years. <laughs> I mean, that's just the truth, dog. Damn. <laughs> how hard is it just to absorb a loss like this after after going ahead by 20? Next question, man. The season's over. That's what's hard. Being up 20. The season's over. You don't understand that. The season's over. It's hard. Stupid ass questions. All right. That was unnecessary. But yeah, let's, yeah, let's react yeah, to the sound. Let's get to the sound before I get into the debate. Um, what do you mean, get to the sound? Meaning, like, your reaction to the post game. Well, well, both Ant and well, Cat, well, well, and then uh, Ant and Cat were funny and factual. Funny and factual. In other <laughs> yes. words, we've been losing. Yeah, yeah, we've been yeah. losing 20 years. <laughs> yeah. you know, they were funny and factual. Yeah. It's just that simple. And so, major, major props to them. What an incredible comeback. In terms of Mike Malone, a great coach, a champion, highly respected throughout NBA circles, respectfully, sir, that was not a dumbass question. That was a re actually, it was a very respectful question. You were yes. up by 20. You did end up blowing that lead. It was a game seven. You're the reigning defending NBA champions. You're At on home. your home court. You won three straight to take a 3-2 lead. You got annihilated by 45 points in game six. You come back for game seven. You're up 20, and y'all lose to a younger team and what have you. The reporter was very, very respectful, just saying, you know, could you express – what you're feeling right now because of how you lost. It's one thing if you – there is a difference. I know a loss is a loss. Shannon and Legs, y'all can speak to that better than me. A loss is a loss. But on your home court in a game seven, trying to defend your crown with a berth to the conference finals on the line, up 20 and losing the game, it is not beyond the pale for a reporter to ask you – what are your emotions like? Because that is a little bit different than losing a nail biter. It is a little bit different than getting annihilated by 50. You know, even though they got out school like 54 to 24 over a stretch of the second half. Yeah. I'm just saying, I thought the reporter was very respectful in the question that he asked, and I thought that was a complete overreaction and a disrespectful reaction by Coach Malone. Shay? Yeah, Mike Malone's going to have to learn. You have to handle disappointment and prosperity the same, exact same way. Now the reporter asking, what can you express your emotions being up 20 on your home court and losing? And now the season's over. The season's over. Dumbass question. Oh, no, 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 no. I want you to have, I want you with your chest out. Like you was poking fun last year when everybody talking about the Lakers. Oh, they still talking about that? We're the champs. You see? You have to handle disappointment and prosperity the same way. 
Nobody likes to lose, especially legs when you get to this level. But it's a part of it. When you, when you accept victory, when you accept the things that come along with that, you must handle with grace and dignity disappointment. And I thought he handled it totally wrong. He was wrong, and he should apologize to the reporter. I understand when emotions are high, logic is low. But Mike Malone, you was out of line on this one. You lost. You had the three-time MVP. You're up 20 on your home court. And the Nuggets outscored you 60 to 37 in the second half. And they held you to 14 points in the third. No, no, you can't handle it like this, Mike Malone. I'm totally disappointed with how he handled the postgame. I completely agree. First of all, it was not an inappropriate question in any way, shape, or form. It was actually a pretty good question in the moment. Uh, he didn't handle that well. And, I, I, by the way, I'll be shocked, knowing Michael Malone, if he does not apologize yeah, to Yeah, because he's a class act. He, he absolutely yeah. he carries himself that way. I think when he's had time to reflect on it, when he sees how much that sound is played today, I think he's going to feel pretty badly about the fact that he embarrassed that reporter. I think he will come out with an answer. Here's the bottom line. He's angry because he challenged his team when they were down 2-0 in this series before game three, and I had a chance to talk to him before that game. He was so angry with the position that they were in because he didn't want to just win a title. He did that last year. He wanted to go on a run of titles, and he was challenging his team to be historic, not just win a title and get to the finish line. How many do you want to win? Do you want to be rare and unique and, and separate yourself in terms of teams that win one and teams that win multiple championships. That's why I think he was so frustrated in the moment, and that game was within grasp. He could taste moving on to the conference finals. It was right there, and they were not able to stem the tide once Minnesota had a couple of balls go in in the third quarter because their offense was terrible in the first half. Once they started making some shots and they thought to themselves, you know what, we're actually in this game, they didn't bury us yet. Now they could turn the defense loose, and you saw this avalanche that Denver got hit with, and there were no answers from Michael Malone, from the Denver Nuggets role players, who I blame a lot for this loss yesterday. Yeah. And so Michael Malone was so frustrated in the moment. He didn't handle that well. He'll be the first one to own it, I believe, once he's had a little bit more time away from this and time to reflect.